Light for white tip. Remedy squash to least see one. Hello everyone, my name is Delise Seymour. I am a young indigenous Shaquamic woman. As a child, I hated the color of my skin. I grew up thinking that because my skin color was brown, there was something wrong with me. I grew up having to deal with the discrimination, the bullying, the racism on a daily basis and still do. Residential schools took my people's identity, our culture, our language, our beliefs, our traditions, and most importantly, our way of living. These schools were not in any way to benefit the children. This was a deliberate genocide of the native people. Just over 20 years ago, the last Indian residential school was closed. More than 150,000 children were stolen, and over 50,000 died or simply disappeared. In the present day, natives from all across Canada are still affected from this genocide. We all need to start shedding light and understanding the awful truth behind residential schools. Colonizers around to communities and villages, stealing only children aged 5 to 16 years old. Once taken to these strange forbidden buildings, they were immediately stripped from their culture, told from unfamiliar white faces to scrub their brown skin off because God doesn't like brown skin. Indian residential school survivors have stated, as soon as we entered the residential school, the abuse started right away. Children were used as guinea pigs for new medications, intentionally infected with TB, tuberculosis, just to see how long it would take for them to die. Electroshocks, also known as electric chairs, were used on those innocent souls. Not only did they use them as human experiments, children were abused on a daily occurrence. Females would be sterilized so men could either rape or take advantage of them without facing the consequences of getting them pregnant. The act of teaching the natives the white way took action in all the wrong ways. Nuns and priests physically, emotionally, mentally, verbally, and sexually abused the children of all ages. Both male and female experienced all this endless, horrible abuse day after day. The Indian residential schools taught the youth that there was no room for love or family, only rigid structure. Children who were caught crying would be punished by being beat or locked in a small cage with little food and water for days on end. These children eventually grew up and became parents who never knew how to parent, only what the Indian residential school system taught them. Having an upbringing like this in life would be near impossible to recover from. Mass graves from children who died in the residential schools are still being found today. Can you imagine being an Aboriginal parent and knowing your child was stolen to endure such a horrible experience? In taking all this information, you get a brief understanding of why certain Indigenous residential school survivors had self-medicated with drugs and alcohol to numb the pain of loss of their innocence as well as their children. By destroying the culture, they destroyed the strengths of entire nations. With destroyed nations, the government of Canada had an easy time stealing endless resources, like our land and resources from the land, and continued to keep First Nations people oppressed. The ongoing cycle of the Ministry of Child and Family Development, a funded government agency, is still placing Aboriginal children in the foster care system with non-Native families on an ongoing loop of child oppression, the continued dismantling of language, culture, and traditional ways, leaving Aboriginal parents helpless when it comes to building a foundation for their families to grow upon. I am the ninth generation of impacted children. And I think many people consistently feel that they are being blamed for these schools. But we people, my people for the most part, are not here to point fingers. We are in need of being future people and not people of the past, as most do recognize us. I never thought that one day I would be able to say I am comfortable in my own skin, but I stand here today honored to be a young Shaquemic woman. 
cherishing my brown skin because I now know what my ancestors had to endure to preserve what we have left of our language, culture, and traditional ways. I think it is important for people to recognize this did not take place that long ago. Two generations ago, my grandparents on both my father and mother's side were stolen and forced to attend residential schools. My mother's generation was the aftermath and they had to grow up with traumatized, post-traumatic stress parents who did their best to raise their families. Or, sadly, had to watch their parents either self-medicate with drugs and alcohol or repeat dysfunctional patterns learned from residential schools. But more importantly, they got to witness their parents' courage to heal through culture and ceremony, and to have the strength and resilience to share their experiences about the truth of what happened to them at residential schools. This is why Orange Shirt Day holds such a profound value to myself and Indigenous people. Today, if I can leave my mark and spread awareness, then I feel that I too can speak on behalf of the children who were never able to use their voices. You have only heard what I have to say. However, there is so much truth to the Canadian history and what took place in the Indian residential schools. If you can open yourself up to learning more of what took place for our ancestors, then you can be a part of the solution in creating change and having a better understanding of how this system was designed to kill the Indian in the child. The blue heart represents my generation and generations to come bridges the gap between residential school survivors and youth that are still affected today. Lastly, I can never say enough about residential schools, and this is just the beginning of society becoming aware of the truth. Yeah.